Okay, thank you very much, Shukri. Um, I would address the next question to John, and it comes from the audience. And the question is, why crop insurance, in most cases, fail to reach, the, to reach poor and marginal farmers? How can we ensure that the most vulnerable farmers are actually reached by, by these tools? Over Thank you. Very good question. And it also links with... Uh, Oh, we miss. John, uh, your microphone is again uh, failing. If you could okay, I hope reactivate. I, Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I've just come back from a CCAPS meeting, the Climate Change, Agriculture and Food Security Research Program, where we're looking at exactly this, the whole issue of social equity and index insurance. And we recognize that we haven't given that enough importance. And partly because of the pressure from donors and the way that we have to justify research money. We're very um, focused on numbers. We want to demonstrate X million farmers have access to index insurance. And I think some of us are cautious or worried that we're, we're not going deeper into those figures. Is that X million of the wealthiest farmers the poor of the farmers? So we've developed a social equity framework, which we're using as a tool to encourage people to look at both issues of how inequality impacts on the farmers who have access to the insurance in the first place, but also how inequalities can be exacerbated, existing inequalities can be exacerbated by index insurance. For example, the wealthier farmers taking advantage of the insurance to the detriment of the poor. So there's no easy answers to this, but I also think there's some hard facts that we, we have to face up to. As is the case with many sort of technologies and practices, it might well be the case that they are not necessarily appropriate for all types of farmers. Smallholder farmers are not a homogenous group. There's huge disparities within them. It might be in some cases that advances in agriculture or advances in livelihood improvement for agricultural communities for the poorest of the poor should be through safety nets rather than trying to tailor index insurance for those farmers. If they don't own the land, index insurance might not be of particular relevance to them. The answers, but it's a question which is, become, which is coming to the fore as we look at the impact of insurance that goes beyond the numbers of farmers, but actually dwells into whether we're contributing to food security, but also greater social equity. OK, thank you very much, John, for, John. for your very interesting answer. Um, I would move on now, addressing a question to Marcel, but actually any other speakers that would <laughs> Please feel free to do so. And the question is, has any study been done to determine the willingness of pastoralists to pay? I mean, you can refer to the Kenyan case if you are familiar with it, but also to other case studies that you might have, you might know. Thank you. Over to you. Yes, thank you for this question. Um, well, a study, I don't, I'm not aware of any study which has been uh, done in that, in that respect, uh, but uh, the design of that program is such, or the overall strategy is such that the government is protecting these five cows for free, but on, in, on top of that, so to speak, compulsory program or is, is, is a voluntary program for the farmers itself who are interested in buying coverage uh, for the year, for their livestock, which is larger than five cows. So there is uh, this incentive actually uh, to think about uh, insuring more than the five um, that exists. But to your question, in particular, I'm not aware of any such uh, uh, reports has been conducted in that respect. 
Okay, Martha, thank you. Um, I would actually have another question that came from the audience and also I'm very interested in it. Uh, how was the use of this NDVI, of this index based on DVI, like validated on the ground? Uh, did you partner with any uh, local research institutions or, or what? Yeah, the design was not, uh, the product wasn't designed by, by, by us. It was defined by, um, um, what was the name again? It was designed by um, the research, the Livestock Research Institute, exactly now I have the name, uh, which actually was proposing this index to the Kenyan government. Uh, and obviously there has been discussion, you know, back and forth whether this is now uh, a good one or not. But of course it has been, I haven't been or we haven't been in particular involved in all those stages during the design phase. At the end of the day, the government obviously has decided that this is the a viable index to start off uh, and obviously to test it out in, the, in particular the first, the first two raining season and if they would be like seen or Experience shows that it doesn't really nicely respond, you know, in large scale, and obviously adjustment would have been needed. But uh, that hasn't been the case, so um, that's the reason why the program has been uh, renewed or expanded for for another for another for a second second season. So that's what I can elude here for this or explain for for this question. Okay, Marcel, thank you very much. Anyway, uh, you gave um, some uh, useful information anyway. I would have now another question to John, and uh, it's on basically on technology application. Sorry, I can't see the question anymore. What's wrong with it? Uh, yeah, what is the potential of technologies other than satellite-based imagery in capturing the environmental variability of a given context at a local scale? you know, that you know to design tailored insurance program. I'm thinking about, for example, the use of drone or other or user generating content application. What's your thought? What's your experience uh, as concerning this case? Technologies. Over to you. Thank you. Maria, you, you cut out, or is it Bianca? I'm not sure who I'm talking to. You, you, uh, you cut out in the middle of that, so I didn't catch it all. Um, I'll also confess that I am not a, an expert, and this would be a question best directed um, if they were participating, my colleagues at Columbia University. Um, satellite does have a huge amount to contribute, and the technology is becoming more and more advanced, even though there's still some way to go. And certainly, there is enormous interest in the use of drones, but certainly one of the problems we've come up against is that some governments are not very favorably disposed to others using drones. So there's quite a lot of um, negotiation that's needed. But when I talk to those who are experts in the design of the indices, their comments are that month by month, year by year, the technology is becoming so much better that we are in a stronger position to develop indices in ways whereby the, the big challenge that we always face, that of basis risk, um, is further reduced. So that's really the best I can do because I'm not an expert on that technology when it comes to the design of uh, indices per se. Okay, thank you anyway, John. Um, I think we can have last question uh, to Marcel. And, uh, yeah, it actually is a quite general one, and uh, yeah, building on the Kenyan experience as well as others that Celsius Pro has contributed to, what do you see as the main challenge for climate risk management, including the use of index-based insurance in the agriculture sector, and how this challenge can be tackled? Over to you, Marcel. Yes, um, well, I think it has already been mentioned by uh, a colleague of mine uh, earlier on that obviously uh, in in uh, 
having success in implementing such programs, you cannot do this as, a, as just a one-man show, so to speak. You need to have the various stakeholders. Um, of course, you know, it's the design, it's the data you need, uh, actually, uh, to build a good database that you can make the risk takers comfortable, that the data is in good uh, shape, it's from a quality and quantitative perspective. You have uh, donors maybe also to bring in the interest uh, to support certain certain programs for certain reach for certain account. You need to have the government, uh, which uh, uh, plays an, uh, an important role, as I mentioned before, in particular the beginning. Um, so you need to have a lot of contributors uh, in this entire value chain in designing those programs. From, from real the start, you know, launching and then obviously into, into the operation and obviously settlement. And obviously we are all, you know, what we're trying to do with index-based insurance is nothing else than anything what has been already done on the very traditional way. Insurance as such is nothing else than a promise uh, into, for the future, into the future to get a claims paid if, you know, you have been suffering. And uh, and this is the whole value of the product. And of course, uh, we are talking about index risks, and uh, in particular in the agro uh, 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 um, industry, which is, as we have heard, is extremely difficult to find uh, a very very good product, which always 100% mirrors the situation on the field. So, in short, as I said. There are so many players in uh, in this in this in this uh, designing and implementation operational phase. So you need all of them. But I, from experience, I would like to say here: you need to have somewhere a champion. I call it like that. You need to have a guy or a body, an organization who drives that. Don't don't just be there and believe okay, I can rely on this guy and they're going to do it. No, there needs to be really somebody who drives the entire project from the beginning and really wants to push that through. And only then, I think, you can be certain enough that the thing is going to work out in a way it has been initially, initially planned. Okay, thank you, Marcel. I think now we are kind of running out of time, so we should move on to the conclusions.